All right. So, uh, first of all, Kenny, good afternoon or good evening, and thank you for uh, for joining us today. And thank uh, you for everyone. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, for those of you that's your first time joining us, uh, two things actually I'm going to throw out. Um, one, if for some reason I'm upside down, sideways, Kenny's upside down, um, be sure and either use uh, Safari or um, uh, uh, Google Chrome, I guess, uh, for, for people that use Firefox, for some reason it does something with the images. Um, but the good news is, even if we are upside down, you're not missing much. We don't look any better the other way around. Uh, actually, I'll speak for myself. And uh, and you can still hear us and, uh, and, and chat with us. Um, in regards to the chat, the lower right-hand corner, you guys will see a text box, and that is where you can go ahead and type away questions, and I will just kind of feed them to Kenny as the as the conversation goes. So um, to kick things off, Kenny, uh, you know, you've had a, a pretty uh, exciting and, and successful career. Um, we now know you currently as McLaren chief test driver, um, but what did the road look like to get to this point? Give us a little brief, the, the Kenny summary. Long and hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, um, no, but I, I started out racing, you know, I started out being, I grew up in Sweden uh, and uh, in, in the Is woods. Is that where the New York Sweden. accent comes from? That, that's right. That's from, <laughs> that's from when I drove for David Letterman's team, you know, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, but I grew up there in the woods, and uh, you know we had nothing much to do in the in the in in our spare time. So uh, the Swedish rally was around the corner. My dad and I used to drive there. He let me drive. I was six seven years of age. I sat in his lap and drove on the ice or on the lake or to the other side of the lake in the winter time. And so. You know, uh, sort of the interest started there, and then um, then it continued. Uh, you know, um, and uh, up through the various, um, you know, uh, in the beginning, uh, illegal uh, activities behind the wheel on gravel roads and uh, own cars and uh, in the woods, and then up to karting and Formula Ford, Formula Three, Formula Three Thousand. You know, Skip Barber Saab, um, uh, Formula One. From, you know, and uh, test driving Formula One and then ended up in, in Indy cars um, at the end and then did a lot of stuff after that too. I rock uh, uh, X Games in Los Angeles, uh, uh, rally like co-driving rally, rally cross, uh, tried most things, vintage racing. It's been, um, it's been a really um, fantastic uh, journey so far, you know, and now I'm obviously working with what I love, you know, to tune cars and to, to the creative work to, to create the driver experience, to create uh, the best possible performance in, 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 in today's current sport cars. That's awesome. So, you know, you, you brought up a couple of things that I want to I want to uh, ask. So <clears throat> rewinding back to where you're from, you know, the Swedes, the Finns, you guys are known for being pretty skilled behind the wheel. Do you think that your upbringing and also just the environment, the fact that you've got um, you know, like the driving surface of, of, you know, again, the ice, the gravel, like you said, do you think it gives you guys just uh, an innate better sense of car control because you've had to deal with that? Or do you think it doesn't really apply? No, no, I do think it applies. I think that what what you learn at a young age is uh, you absorb so much more then than what you do later in life, you know, and uh, I'm sure it's got uh, a great value, you know, if you can start off driving on, on slippery surfaces. You know, I spent years driving uh, on, on the ice of the lake with summer tires, not spikes. You know, we had rally tires back then, but I, I, I drove on summer tires just to develop the feel for the grip and the... The, 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 what's possible on you know and 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 to drive economically um and then um, you know when you then put on real tires and you get the grip then you you can really utilize that vehicle um so i do think it makes a difference and i think that um you know you should be able to sit in any car and drive it to, as fast as it's, it, it can go within a few hundred meters you know yeah. otherwise you can't call yourself a professional driver you know i don't yeah. think that if it's gravel you know asphalt ice shouldn't matter you know and, and you you brought up something you know about uh setup that you really enjoy you know especially <laughs> with with the, the current position you have now 
setting up the cars uh, and in, in this and you know essence also just, you know kind of creating how they drive you know the, you had great success in a series that unlike formula one everyone was for the most part kind of delivered the same car i mean you could argue about power plant and things like that but with indycar um i mean you know we're not talking about like somebody's got an adrian newey design car and somebody's got one done by ross braun I mean, you guys all were running the same thing. Did you find it very exciting? The, the, like for you, was, was the setup a, a big part of it? The fact that you could find a way to squeeze that little bit of performance just because you probably were a better driver at, at setting up a car? Well, you know, um, IndyCar is very competitive on the track. You know, it's, uh, it's no doubt about that because you start off with the same base package, but then of course you have different teams and the teams do their own setups and develop the cars. And back when I drove, it was more free than it is now in yeah. terms of regulations. But um, no matter, you know, uh, I don't think any race has been won by any driver unless the car has been great and been set up to win. So, uh, you know, Driving racing and winning races isn't about being the bravest, it's about being the smartest, it's about taking calculated risks, but it's also being uh, interested in the technology. Um, to know what you need from shock absorbing, springs, you know, aerodynamic uh, 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 help and, all, you know, tires to create that package that allows you to, to win on the Sunday. Uh, without a winning car, you're not going to win. So. Um, you, you're going to have to learn that one way or another. And uh, I took, uh, I, I was very keen on learning that part of it because uh, it's just necessary, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so the questions are stacking up here. So I'm going to kind of go over here. So um, <laughs> a, a good one to kind of start with, you know, when you look back on it, what, what would you say, and this is to be in any racing category that you've raced in, what would you say that sticks out most as your toughest race? Oh God, that's difficult to say. You know, there's been. I, I, I don't really know, to be honest. I, I well, the, the toughest race was probably a, a vintage race I drove at the Nurburgring Nordschleife. You know, in an AC Cobra Daytona in 1964. Um, <laughs> the the original car. We had an original car, and it was really hot this this summer. And, um, you know, Nürburgring is a really tough circuit, the Norse life, a really dangerous also, really, really dangerous. And, and we were That's leading... 64 the, Cobra. Yes, all you had uh, for protection is a thin layer of uh, metal sheet around you and a big V8 at the front, you know. But, uh, uh, you know, we were leading the race and I, it was so hot in the car and I couldn't physically drive the thing, you know. I was leading and leading and, and the laps kept counting down, but... I needed to go to the pits because I was about to pass out. So yeah. I, I had to pit before they, the pit sign came out. And I, I got into the pits and I, I passed out. They I had to go to the hospital and, and get uh, liquid yes. fluid uh, injected in my veins to, 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 to get going again, or to, to wake up. It was, that, that was probably one of the toughest races from a physical standpoint, you know. Yeah. But there's been others. You know, I, I was quite dehydrated in Portland one no, uh, uh, um, what was yeah Portland one year um, where um, where I couldn't walk after the race either. You know, IndyCar right. race and cart. Yeah. So there's been tough races like that. Um, you know, um, yeah, yeah. Of no, course, no, of course, I had a race in Texas in 2003 that left me nearly dead. So that was also pretty tough. So I was, you know, <laughs> that question's gonna come up, and I and I, I got to go right to it. I mean, yeah. You sustain oh. probably the highest G load of any human being and it has survived. I mean, wasn't it 241 Gs of deceleration? Yeah, 214. Oh, I'm sorry. And that is that is a world record, you know. But I, I think that of all, I've done many records in my career, you know, championships, <laughs> Indy 500s, Nurburgring uh, lap records and all kinds of things. But, you know, you should go for the records that nobody wants to break. And that one will stand for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. You, you, you're finding all the um, yeah, all, all the empty spots. You know, no, I like, I like that you want to succeed at anything you do. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> I'm sure, there's an eating contest you've won. All kinds of stuff. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, so so you know, actually, you know, we'll, we'll stay on the accident. Just, you know, 
what did what did that what was what was life like after that i mean what was the recovery like i mean what was you know yeah. it was a there was a tough recovery after that one you know um um uh, it took 18 months to well i did make a comeback but um yeah. But it was uh, it was tough. I was I spent three months in hospital. You know, I broke, phew, I, I broke nearly everything. Yeah, yeah. spines. You know, femurs, uh, sternums. It was it was bad. But uh, and I sat in a wheelchair for a long time. And um, and uh, but but you know, uh, I got Did you get any I records got, in the wheelchair. No, but <laughs> actually, you know, uh, I, I I did learn how to drive it pretty good. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, had to install ramps on my house in Columbus, Ohio to get in and out. And um, and it was a it was a tough rehab. You know, I, I rehab six days a week, um, uh, you know, all, all 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 the days. And um, but but got back, you know, um, I remember I, I convinced my team, uh, Ray Letterman at the time to, to let me drive, uh, uh, you know, because I wanted to get back into racing. And so I I did a, a test like. Um, six seven months later uh, and uh, the speed was there it was really good but i i couldn't you know i couldn't uh my 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 stamina wasn't good enough but yeah. that's when i thought you know maybe another year and i can make a comeback and so i worked really hard and made a comeback at the indy 500 in 2005 and i qualified the quickest uh, uh, uh quickest qualifying time in the field it was uh, yeah. was fantastic it was really good. That's that was the first fir first time I felt I won the race before it even started. Right, right. Yeah. No, that's that's got to be. You know, it's a very like Nicky Lauda kind of story. I mean, in terms of like come back, coming back from something that's you know so severe. You know. Yeah. Um, so uh, we'll we'll go to something a little bit more <laughs> lighthearted here. So again, questions are, are stacking up here. This is great, guys. Um, favorite track in the U.S. Um. Well. I have two, that's if okay. that's okay. The oh, first please. one is Indianapolis Speedway. You know that's a fantastic place. Lots of history. It's 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 a it's an iconic uh, place. Gasoline yeah. Alley. You know it, all the legends in motorsports been there. You know, um, and the other one is um, Road America, um, which is oh. a fantastic track uh, up is. in Wisconsin. Yeah, and. Um, uh, it was a favorite track of mine. I ended up in hospital there once. I got a car up on on my head and and uh, had a little problem with my neck after that. But it it uh, it healed it up. Yeah, but it's a fantastic track. You know, really really challenging. And um, in an Indy car around there, it's unbelievably fast. Yes. Uh, fantastic. I love it. Yeah, yeah. That's um, I I've, I've had the pleasure of driving that track in sports cars and. Um, it is. It is. Uh, it is something else. I couldn't imagine having, you know, a lighter car, more speed, more downforce around there. Um, yeah. It's a crazy track. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Now we're gonna go. We're gonna switch over to McLaren here. So uh, we're just gonna go right to the top and just say for you. And again, this is a this is a driver preference thing. It's not by any means. It has to be a performance thing, but. What has been your favorite McLaren that you've driven? Where have you just felt really at home behind the wheel or just or excited to drive? In terms of the models, you mean? Yes. Um, I think that um, one favorite of mine is the 720. Um, because when we did that car, uh, you know, we, we we tuned it to have a really wide envelope of usage you know it's 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 quite comfortable on the road it is. Uh, but it's extremely also fast on a racetrack yeah. and what I love about that car is the acceleration you know when you when you accelerate with that car yeah. it doesn't matter I mean you, you drivers get used to a car you know it's right. a fast car but the second and third and fourth time you drive it it sort of slows down and you get used yeah. to it yeah, that car. Yeah, that car. Um, every time you accelerate with it, it it leaves you breathless. It's it's a really exciting car. I think. I'd I'd go for the yeah. Spider because uh, that also it ruffles your hair a bit, you know, in the oh, summer. Yeah, there you go. Go. Well, that that would be that. my California here. We're all about yeah. the spiders. Yeah, that'd be um, the favorite, but but they're all they're all good, you know. It's uh, they're positioned a bit differently, you know. If you choose yeah. an LT, then it's a bit more sporty, but you know, 
it depends um, what you like, but yeah, I would say. Speaking of the LD, you know, you know, what do you think in terms of the performance envelope? The you know the delta between the seven twenty and the seven sixty five. You know, do you you know? I mean, some brands now it's about sticking on some bits and you know putting the exhaust in a different place. Um, do you do you feel like the seven six five? There was a big big kind of jump in performance in terms of what it delivers. Yeah. It is. I mean, because how the hell, I, mean, I don't even know how you can go faster. The 720 is so fast. Like, I, I think know. the numbers are even downplayed because you guys don't want to make other cars feel bad. So well, it's like, I can only imagine, I don't know how you get more out of that car. Hmm. Well, you've maybe you've seen some of the uh, 720 uh, YouTube videos with acceleration figures yeah, and yeah. other cars, and you know you you, you got to go into the hypercar territory to have somebody right. even stack up against that car in an acceleration. Yeah. But uh, the 765 is uh, that's going to be something else completely. It's a really fast car, and it's. Uh, we're working on the final um, calibrations now, and it's been a lot of work with that car. But you know, um, that's gonna, yeah, it's uh, it's something else. It's uh, it's an LT. It's it's a track focus car, so it's not going to be as uh, if you want to drive across America, you probably right. prefer the 720 uh, yeah. for for <laughs> for a couple of days yeah. driving. <laughs> but if you want something really performance orientated and uh, and use it on the roads around town and stuff, then the 720 will be a uh, 765 is uh, yeah, it's uh, something else. I you know, I guarantee you. Well, as I say, other than outright speed, you know, because what what else would you say, or if somebody getting behind the wheel of the seven six five that's owned a seven twenty or driven one, what would you say are the first things, you know, that they would that they would notice that, that are that are different? You think in terms of driver feel that the seven six five does different than the seven twenty? Well, I mean, first off, it's it's a, it's less insulation in the car, so it gives you more direct feel with the road. Uh, you know, uh, engine mounts are stiffer. You get more uh, um, excitement into the cabin. Um, Sound-wise, you know, uh, it's 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 uh, more sporty in that sense. Um, you know, it's stiffer in the suspension. It, it, it's going to be more uh, uh, responsive in in its reaction steering, and uh, you know, it's got uh, it's got short gear ratio so that you uh, you will have a more uh, it'll be. A, accelerating faster it's got more power it's got more torque it's a lighter car um you know <laughs> it's uh it's uh it's got mclaren senna brake system on it you know the the big calipers at the front and uh it's uh it's a car made to kill anything else that yeah uh, in, it, in, it, the, it, in the in the in, in in his class you know it's, it tur it's, it turned it up to 11 for sure yes yes it's gonna it's gonna wipe the floor with everything else i promise you Awesome. All right. So more questions here. Um, we're going to switch back to your to your racing days. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase this, but it, it says, you know, did you ever have a rival in any of the leagues that you raced in? Of course, you had rivals, but who did you ever go wheel to wheel with that you really rate that you were just like that? It was just a proper shoe, you know, someone that you enjoyed battling with. <clears throat> well, you know, there were many, many uh uh, drivers, you know, uh, Michael Andretti, uh, Juan Pablo Montoya, uh, Jill De Ferran, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, Max Pappis, it, there was yeah. uh, Bruno Junqueira, yeah, um, Scott Dixon, you know, he's still driving today, Tony yeah. Canan, uh, Heli Castro Neves, it, it, it was. Uh, Many, many, many more. There were really a lot of good drivers, you know, that you had to, you had to, you had to use your uh, skills to try to try to beat, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, when you were driving that series, and that was some of the most competitive years. Yeah, you know? it was also, you know, we also drove I Rock, you know, with, you know, Dale Earnhardt, uh, great yeah. guy, you know, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Bobby Labonte, you know, all, all these uh, guys. It was, yeah. uh, it was just a fantastic time. I, I, looking yeah. back at it now, it's like, you know, God, you, you really were in it when it was. Uh, it was a fantastic time because it was. Nowadays, racing is very regulated. I, I, yeah. I feel it's a bit too many chicanes and a bit too many white lines, you know, <laughs> and a bit too many rules. Uh, back yeah. then, it was ex 
you know, thousand horsepower, and he was like, right. "You go for it, man!" And you, yeah. <laughs> there was, it was yeah. a bit more like cowboyish, you know. And yeah. I like that. You can, you can, um, you can um, pick up a shovel and shovel. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, it's funny, you mentioned Jill DeFerrin. Now, if I remember correctly, he's also involved with McLaren now, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he is. He's uh, involved on the IndyCar side. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, do you guys ever interact? Do you guys ever reminisce about the old days and how funny it is that you both kind of ended up, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we 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 hook up uh, not so often uh, as you might believe or think, but you know, a couple of times a year, and uh, you know, we we actually came up through the racing series pretty much, well, nearly side by side, you know, through the lower categories: Formula yeah. Ford, Formula Opel Lotus, Formula Three, Formula Three Thousand, and so yeah. on. And we both sort of. Uh, 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 turn down F1 because uh, I, I don't know Jill's uh, specifics, but mine was that I d didn't get a good good enough ride in a, in a team, so I thought I better not do it because uh, I, I, I wasn't really interested in just being making up the numbers. Right. Um, so so we came up sort of together, you know, and uh, we we both made a fair 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 had a fair crack at it, I think. Is there any interest in hopping in the um, the McLaren IndyCar, even if just for a shakedown? You know, I think every every um, everything has its time, you know. And I think uh, <clears throat> for me, I've done I did racing for uh, 30, 30, 35 years, and it's time to time to look to the future, you know. Once once you get older in sports, you know you. Yeah. Uh, and I want to stay in the driving side because I really yeah. enjoy the, the the creative things on 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 setting up cars and stuff. But you know, you got to look to where you can do a, the best job, and and you can't really take on twenty five year olds when you're fifty three. You know, you, from a pure um, physical standpoint, you you, yeah. you it takes too much. Uh, yeah. So I have jumped over to the industrial side, and I feel that I make uh, I make a good input there. Um, I feel it's very interesting. Uh, the technology we're using is is unlimited in, on the on the industrial side, whereas racing, you know, we have quite uh, 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 regulated rules. Yeah. Um, so so there's many things that I find interesting on the industrial side, and it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's a road for the future. You know, I can um, I can help that side, and it can help me. So I think that's my this is my second chapter. Um, so no, I I don't want to go in back into any uh, open wheel uh, top uh, top cars like that. They probably scared the shit out of me now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, you've done it. You've survived it. You've crashed it. You've won it. I mean, I think you've you've done it. Um, yeah, I did. I, I did the best. That. I did the best I could at least. Right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's funny actually. Speaking of of having your head sticking out of the car and not doing that anymore. Um, I saw a great picture of you the other day as of you in the the test mule Elva with all the camouflage. You had some sunglasses on. Yeah. Oh. you driving? What's it like driving that thing? Because that's kind of like both worlds merged together. You know. Yeah. I mean, what's, yeah. what's it like to drive that thing with no helmet? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, it's it's actually uh, you know. Uh, of course, uh, we've been driving in England in in in, in sort of uh, 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 thirty degree Fahrenheit uh, temperatures, you know, and side wind and rain. It was no more for us here. Yes, it's it's, it's, it's like punishment driving yeah. where you are. Yes, well, it's not. This job is not as glamorous as you think, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, I've also driven it in Spain. You know, uh, where it's warmer, and it's a fantastic car to drive in the right climate. You know, you have a you have a light breeze. You know, um, and uh, you, you're really feeling one with the elements. Uh, so it it gives you a very unique uh, driving experience. Um, of course, uh, I would think that it would be fantastic in in around you know Beverly Hills, uh, Hollywood, totally. down, down by yeah. the beaches. You know, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a car for that type of thing. You know, it's it's not really a car for uh, you know uh, perhaps uh, Michigan in the in the winter. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we won't be opening up that dealership in Detroit anymore then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What a, you know, uh, is it pretty, can, can you tell right away, because, you know, they talk about how being the lightest McLaren kind of to date, can, is that, is that, 
pretty relevant, like right away? I mean, or can it be, you know, felt right away when you're in the car that, it, that it's really light? Yeah, you can feel that it's light and, uh, you know, obviously a lot of power uh, yeah, also. Yeah. So, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, but, but I would think that uh, the, um, the main use would be, you know, to cruise around in, 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 in really nice climates and uh, just enjoy, you know, uh, the, yeah. the elements. It's, um, yeah, the it's ultimate, good for that. The ultimate fair weather car. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned something else and somebody asked a great question. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it, it actually plays right into something that you said about the future. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, kind of, you know, developing these cars for the future and all that what do you think the future um god geez. <clears throat> sorry i don't know why some horse um uh you know, the, the future of car technology like you said things keep getting faster all the technology where do you see kind of the the, the future going um with with cars and, and or, or what part since you get kind of the inside track you get to see stuff and drive stuff years before we ever get to see it hear about it let alone drive it um, where do you see the future of cars going or what about the future, I guess, excites you? Well, I think that there's a lot of technology out there now and I don't know where the future is going. Some people seem to think that in 10 years, well, s sooner actually, some people think that there will be autonomous cars driving around in like uh, sort of a bigger scales in a couple of years. But I think that's just BS. I don't think there's anywhere near um, that uh, level of, uh, you know, uh, development. I think it'll take, uh, well, I don't know, but it, it's going to require a, a, a big um, infrastructure uh, um, Agreed, yeah. uh, and all that stuff to, to do that. But um, I think the challenge with cars is that you need to control what type of new technology you're using. Because to me, it's about creating an ex exciting driving experience to, to be one with the car to feel to feel in control to to have a car that's um, that's predictable and all that stuff and so you really need to use technology that gives you those opportunities so if you if you try to cram a lot of technology into a car which a lot of car manufacturers are trying to do yeah. you end up with something that's not a, a, a nice uh, driving experience in the end because you can't really physically calibrate all these complicated systems to, to, to feel like one at the end. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, new technology, but, but, but limit it so that you, you, you can really get a good calibration at the end to, to preserve the driving joy of a car. Yeah. Um, that's, that's one of the challenges today, because there's a lot to choose from. Um, yeah. So, But I mean, very well said, and that's, you know, you know there's a lot of debate over um, you know, hybridization of drivetrains and things like that, and, you know, the death of the internal combustion engine. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, I remember when everyone was, you know, naturally aspirated, naturally aspirated, and now, you know, people are just trying to hang on to, again, an internal combustion engine, even if it does have forced induction. But I, I really thought what you said was really important, um, especially as someone who is physically and metaphorically sat in the driver's seat for the development of, of some of these future products and the fact that you, you know, in your heart of hearts want to preserve the joy of driving and that driving experience and not feeling like a passenger and still feeling like a pilot. I think that's really important. I think that uh, I think it depends what kind of car you're developing. You know, if you develop a car for transportation between A and B, maybe you yeah. want to sit in the rear seat, you know, sipping a Coke yeah. or something while the car drives you to the destination. But if you're buying a car for driver joy, our job is to deliver the best driver joy there is. And so to do that, you're going to have to choose the right technology. You're going to have to calibrate and set it up correctly. And you're going to have to be better than your, your, your competitors, you know, that's, that's what it is all about. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so I'm going to, there's a, again, some great questions in here, so I'm just going to hop around. I am going to completely botch this name, <clears throat> but, uh, but I, I have to ask it because I, I want to know who it is. It says, are you a fan of either Essa or Issa, um, Pekka Solonen, Issa Pekka Solonen? 
Sounds familiar? Not familiar? I I've heard that name, but I'm not quite sure right. in what uh, is he is Finnish, of course. I I can hear that, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna live Google him her. It's gotta be him. Is ah, him? He's a is a Finnish. Oh, orchestral conductor and composer. He oh. is the principal conductor of artistic advisor of the Philharmonic Orchestra in London. Which is funny because you know that you live in the UK. Okay. You live in the UK, don't you? I, I live in the UK, and That's I have weird. a I have a band. I play guitar. Also, we record music. But you I should know this it guy. may you it, should be mates. I don't know it may not. I don't know. Oh, I, also, I think. Yeah, and he looks like he spent some time in LA with the LA Philharmonic. Well, oh. I guess the real question is, Kenny, are you a man that likes symphony? Well, no, I I, I play more rock and rock rock and roll <laughs> type of thing. But you know, all music is good music, you know. So uh, yeah. You know what? I got a better question. Do you like to listen to music when you drive? And if so, what? I I do. You know, I have a funny story about that. Uh, one time, I came down to Alabama, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know, uh, I I I I'd rented a car there from Hertz, and I sat in the car, and I turned the ignition key, and out of the speaker streamed "Sweet Home Alabama" with Leonard Skinner, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so was that was meant to be. that was meant to be and and actually later uh, in my career i i had the great joy to to get to know um uh, ed king who was the guitarist in leonard skinner who no wrote way. the riff to uh to sweet home alabama and he uh he yeah we became really good friends and uh, i i made a tv show where he was a guest of mine and um and he um yeah we we played a few shows together and he fantastic uh, guitar player he passed away a couple of years back sadly but uh yeah, just just uh, fantastic uh, person what a and cool guitar story, player. Though. I mean, that's yeah. very that's that's super cool. Um, uh, God, I was I was asking regarding music. It made me think of something, but I'll I'll come back to it. Um, oh, actually, you know, this is a good one. I have to talk about Hertz rental cars. Uh, what is your daily driver? My car. Yeah. Um, I have a Toyota Ver Corolla Verso uh, diesel uh, 2005 uh, 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 year, uh, uh, and it's a it's a it's a left-hand drive. I bought this when I lived in Belgium in 2005, and then I imported it to England. And here we drive right-hand cars, but it's a great car, you know. Um, so uh, you know, uh, that's my daily driver. You you might think that's strange, but. You know, I'm not a car guy, really. I, I, I am in this business to make the best driver experience. Um, that's where my interest is. And I am, I find that very creative. So I love create this drive experience and the performance and the corner balance and, and develop this technology and work with the engineers and my driver, test driver team to, 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 to achieve this. Um, but then, you know, I have two kids and so I run them to school and they pour milkshakes in my seats and they <laughs> throw Big Macs around in the car and they throw That's bicycles and, and they <clears throat> nick the door against some, uh, some uh, you know, some, some stone wall outside someplace. So this car is really great. Uh, I love my car. <laughs> you're, a man, you're a man of great speed and great practicality. Like yes, you can say gonna, that. It's going to be on your, your headstone. He was a man of great speed and great <laughs> practicality. You know, um, <laughs> And a lunatic. There you go. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. You, you made me think of something. You were talking about working with a team, setting up a car. Going, you know, you worked with, um, and you still continue to work with, uh, our, our, our good friends at Lanzante. Um, and I still think to this day, one of my favorite things to watch is that in-car video of you and the P1LM uh, just hauling bananas around um, the, the, the Nürburgring. Um, what, you know, what, was, what was that like? I mean, that's a huge, you know, I mean, taking, um, you know, kind of, I don't say like a, you know, a smaller team, but it is, you know, I mean, you know, Lanzante compared to a, you know, big manufacturer with all kinds of people's opinions. I mean, you know, did it kind of take you back to your racing days of, of you know, everyone just listening to the driver? And just giving you what you needed to kind of put that lap down because that was pretty impressive well you know that that project was really fantastic you know uh, dean and i did that together 
so we 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 started off with a P1 GTR and we uh, we we sort of redesigned uh, quite a lot of things on the car to 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 suit the purpose of breaking the lap record at the Nordschleife you know uh, we worked on it for a long time with McLaren's help uh, to 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 you know calibrate certain things and um, and uh, so we went there and we we put that lap down you know and it was uh, it was quite it was yeah the, the 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 energy and the 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 energy and the the determination you can build in a small team you know when everyone's pulling in the same direction it's amazing you know and it was like david and goliath we we came there and we of course we couldn't hire the track for two weeks like the big manufacturers right, do. right right we we went there on an <clears throat> on an open test day and laid it laid it down you know <laughs> we yeah. you know we had some engine troubles uh, during the lap and we had we had to lap another car i believe um but it was still a lap record you know so then nope. so then so then we, we 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 bolted on a new set of tires just to to because the ones we used you know after year around lap around there they're worn out yeah. so we bolted on another set and drove it home to england and said job I, done i was going to say that i mean that car you drove it back i mean you yeah. drove it i cannot believe that i mean there's yeah. video proof and everything like in it you know you guys yeah. it actually looked like it was fairly pleasant you guys had smiles yeah. on your faces so. yeah yeah we we um it was fun you know and uh, <clears throat> we built um we built six uh, well uh, five of those uh, six with the prototype and so uh, they they are somewhere around the world these cars, um, you know. But uh, yeah, fantastic uh, project. Yeah, I know, you know one of them. I know one of them made it to the U.S. I've seen the, I've seen the prototype yeah. a couple of times. Had the pleasure of, of seeing that car. It's pretty um, pretty pretty special. Yes, um, it is. It, it's funny. Speaking of of uh, of, of Dean and, and the and the Lanzante team um, before our interview and all that, I was actually kind of cool. I got to see some images. You just recently got done, kind of shaking down um, the road conversion of the Senna GTR. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, um, what, what I was going to say is, you know, I mean, you having having done the development of the Senna GTR for you know for track purposes, um, you know, did you feel like there was a lot lost um, with, with 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 what's you know with the evolution of the of the road conversion, or did you feel like it was still it still had the the same kind of feel and, and, and I mean obviously it's going to be a little softer but did you feel like a lot of that that you know the driver joy we'll call it was preserved yeah well I, I think that's the in the beginning of uh, of the development now with <clears throat> Dean's doing that uh, road conversion you know but uh, it's going to be a great car but but you know that well the the, G, uh, the 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 GTR track version you know that runs on slicks and it's it's yeah. a really really fast car that one yeah uh, you know a uh, great car uh, so, you know, of course, going to a uh, street tire and so on and maybe higher ride heights and whatever he's going to do, he's going to, uh, of course, um, uh, impact a bit on the performance. But uh, I'm sure Dean will uh, do a good job with that. You know, uh, he always does. So yeah. he'll be good. Yeah. No, we're, we're, we're excited to get it over here on this side of the pond. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the other thing I wanted to ask about drivetrains, because it made me think of it, thinking about uh, Senna GTR, P1 GTR, P1 LM. Um, you know, hybridization, going back to this, and all, do, have you had to tailor your driving style at all? In, 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 you know, I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase this, but, you know, you've got, in, in a lot of cases, some extra added weight. Um, also, maybe power delivery is a little different. Do you feel like you have to tailor your driving style? when you're in a hybrid car versus a, a you know just standard internal combustion engine um, well, really, you shouldn't have to. That's the trick, yeah. isn't it? To right. to make it uh, seamless. You know, uh, as right. a matter of fact, to have hybrid power is actually quite uh, it's quite beneficial with when you have turbo engines because you can fill the turbo uh, uh, lag a bit. You know, um, so it shouldn't be a a big uh, you shouldn't really notice it too much. It should only be uh, positive, really. Um, yeah. But it's, no, it's, it's, a, it's a good point. It is more complicated technology, so it's a bit more involved when you develop these cars, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, for example, uh, the Speedtail, which is a good example. Yeah. You know, um, that car is, uh, you know, 250 mile an hour, uh, and um, 
but if you look at how that's achieved, you know, it's it's extremely low drag, and uh, it's a it's a hybrid system that when you want to do the, the like a speed run, uh, you won't have any hybrid help from first to sixth gear. Uh, it's only when you put it into seventh gear you get full hybrid power to to sort of catapult you over two fifty yeah. mile marker. So it's quite uh, advanced. And then when you drive it on the normal speed modes, you know, if you want to drive it on the road, then you have hybrid power all the time. So yeah. it, you can do a lot with uh, hybrid power. Yeah. You know, speaking of speed tail, it's funny. You know, I I I I geek out and I pay attention to all this stuff like. Um, seeing you know like the, the the development mules drive around and all that was that did that car ever hit a, a, i mean i know you guys took it to cape canaveral and did some cool stuff but did did that car ever have any testing on the track i know it was not for its purpose at all but i've never seen that thing you know uh you see a lot of you know road road testing and and obviously the straight line speed stuff but did you ever have to drive that thing on a track and 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 you know get it crossed up or anything or yeah, we, we test all our cars on the track, you know, but um, again, it depends on the purpose, you know, so where we lay, where we put the emphasis. So uh, speed tail, the emphasis was going fa as fast as possible on the straight line. So that means you're not going to load it up with all the downforce that you would do if you're going right. to go fast around the track. But it's got a lot of power. And I can tell you that if you drive it uh, on, a, on a track without... Uh, you know all the traction controls it's it's a lot of fun to drive it's a, it's it's a, it's a sideways machine <laughs> you can paint awesome. black you can paint black uh, uh, tire track lines for as long as you want you know <laughs> yeah yeah no, that's awesome um okay i, I get all the questions stacking up here okay i i, I gotta ask this because actually this is this is funny um because there's the, there, I'll, 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 I'll get into that in a second, but basically it says, uh, who is going to play you when they make a movie of your life? Oh, I don't know. It must be some ugly son of a bitch. I don't know who it could be. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> and maybe half crazy. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, the, well, you know, it's funny. I bet you, you know, I wonder if Matthew McConaughey can do a good Swedish accent. You know, he, pro he probably could. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, it's funny. Speaking of who's going to play you in a movie. Uh, so, you know, God, I'm trying to think of what year this was. But I mean, I was racing in the Skip Barber series and I knew you were that, you were racing. That, yeah. 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 Really? Look, I look, I know. Look, I know I don't look, you know, look right now. Well, what year was what year was in my mouth? Huh? What year was that? I mean, it, I guess it had because it was after I graduated high school, so it would have been like 2001. I wasn't wasn't oh. it wasn't the Barber Dodge Pro Series. I was racing Western Regional Series and all that. Okay. But you, um, <laughs> obviously, I, I knew of you and all that. But uh, your your cameo in the movie Driven. You remember when you raced with Joe Tanto and Jimmy Bly? Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, was that you? So were no, you my no, cameo? But it's funny because I, I remember the scene of you because, you know, there's all these fake drivers, you know, they've got like, you know, the wannabe, uh, you know, Michael Schumacher character and this and that. But I remember the picture of you and, and I, it's actually was the, the scene was really touching. What is it you looking at a child uh, of like your kids or something like that and putting it in your driver's? Uh, well, hell, that was me myself. You know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But, but, I, but I thought it was cool that they actually used you guys. Yeah, oh, yeah, in, yeah. In the actual filming, you know, um, yeah. instead of just having Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. No, no, it was it was cool. That project was cool. You know, I yeah. the, the film the film might have been so so uh, to to yeah. express it mildly uh, or positively. But um, the, we, you know, we went to the, the China Theater in in on Hollywood Boulevard and uh, you know or you know what do you call it. Yeah. Um, um, Sunset and yeah. uh, and and the red carpet and all. We drove we we drove into cars around the block there. I remember it was yeah. uh, we had a good time. That it was good. Pretty cool. Yeah, it was good yeah. fun. Wait, wait, yeah. So wait, was that a real family picture or were they just like Kenny? This is your family. You know, or was that, that like a real picture? It must have been a that must have been a, a that was in wasn't it in two thousand or two thousand one? It probably yeah, that must yeah. have been fake. You know, I didn't have my first ch child till two thousand three. Right. That, I that's think what I, that's, what, that's what I thought. <laughs> I, I think it was, like, it was like two kids. And anyway, yeah, I just thought, I just thought that was funny. Yeah. But, um, OK. All right. Let me, get, let me get back on. There's some great questions in here. Um, oh, OK. 
you know, we're going to we're going to play into your craziness and wanting to drive the everlasting piss out of everything. Do you have any other disciplines behind you, like motorcycles, boats? Is there anything else that you've had to go in? No, it's all been mostly four wheels, you know, you know, Except for I mean, the wheelchair. Uh, for the wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, wheelchair. I, I got some experience in wheelchair as well. Right. But no, it's four wheels uh, mostly. Um, although I had a couple of motorbikes, but that was when I lived in Houston. I used to ride Harleys to AJ Foyt's shop there and stuff. But and, and I still have those two motorcycles in his uh, museum in, in, no in, way. in Houston. Yeah, but uh, but no, uh, competitively, I've never really driven anything other than four wheels. But you know, I've driven most of the things uh, in four wheels. I I like that. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, great question here, uh, and it, it's it's going to be you know, big full question here. But what what do you think makes McLaren uh, the most driver focused sports cars, in your opinion? Well. You know, we have a driver team of professional race car drivers and uh, McLaren have been brave enough to use uh, input from the sporting side of the automotive side, if that makes sense, from, from yeah. the competition world and utilizing that into the industrial uh, side. And um, so we really pay attention to uh, to getting the cars to perform well, handle well, uh, and uh, we work with the engineers to do that. So it's uh, it's a uh, it's a whole different level of attention to detail if you compare that with uh, with other manufacturers. I think uh, on the balance uh, side of the car, and if you you know if you take a McLaren to a track. Uh, for what it is in whatever class it's it is if it's a sports series if it's a super series or whatever uh, i think you find that uh, they, they perform really really well and, and well above uh, other uh, competitors um, no so, I, I agree i mean you know we we do a number of track days um with with our with our company and uh you know we'll have mclaren specific track days but there's a lot of track days where it's just you know Bring, bring any brand. We even allow people to bring brands that are outside of what we sell uh, within our group. And, um, you know, the McLarens definitely, uh, you know, deliver. You know, you, you can clearly see out there the cars just look like they're at home um, going around the track versus you can see with some of the other brands. And there are other brands that have great racing history, but you can clearly tell they built a car, um, I don't want to say for the masses, but they, they they definitely built something that they almost made, I don't even want to say driver friendly, but more like idiot proof. And so you kind of find that the car is set up, you know, again, it's set up for like massive understeer versus oversteer. You can just tell that, you know, you really have to kind of fight to get the car around um, mm -hmm. versus the McLarens just look on rails. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I, think, I uh, agree. I um, think that's uh, that's part of it. You know, we, we try to make sure the balance is correct for 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 performance you know yeah. um so but you know it's, yeah mm. so speaking of driver focus I, I i wanted to you know ask you something have you had much time behind the wheel of a mclaren f1 the f1 gtr you mean yeah or, or f1 road car i mean just any anything yeah they the original, the, well, I, I, I used to drive the F1 GTR quite, you know, I did uh, Goodwood Hill Climb with that car and uh, yeah, yeah, so I've driven well, the, the competition version and stuff like that, you know, they're, uh, they're cool cars, you know, very, yeah. very raw, very analog, you know, that was before yeah. uh, all the uh, computerized technology world came along and so, you know, you have yeah. the E12 and you have, you know, uh, sequential gearbox and uh you know, direct contact with the ground. It's it's a great car, you know. So actually, it's funny. I've got a question for you. That's more of a a, a a driver technique thing. You know, because you know your racing days and all that, and a lot of the stuff that you've driven is during the days of kind of three pedals and things like that. Because even your um, car, Indy car, and all that, you you were still using like a sequential gearbox, right? Yeah. So yeah, we were. would you, and, and, I, and I'm going to carry it over kind of to both cars, the F1 and that, but um, would, would you always left foot brake? Or like if you found yourself hopping in a McLaren F1, would you still left foot brake? Or would you, would you, you know, not do that because you're still having to work the clutch in certain areas? 
It depends, you know. I mean, in, in racing, uh, although we had the clutch, but we only used the clutch when we started first from the, the first place. gear, and then it was uh, never a clutch again. So we used the left foot brake uh, all the time. But I find that I left foot and right foot brake however it suits. It depends on the situation, and it goes seamless for me. I, I just use whatever needs to be used in whatever situation. You know, sometimes you drive, if you drive other cars, maybe a front, front wheel drive car, you know, then you yeah. left foot brake all the time. Time to, right. to balance the car and to, to set it up with the Scandinavian flick or whatever yeah. you want to do. Uh, so it just depends on the situation. It, it's uh, it's natural. It's seamless. Um, yeah, but I, I would say that our cars in McLaren, um, they are uh, probably well. You 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 can brake with whatever foot you want, but uh, yeah. you, you drive them as quick with the right foot on the brake too. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Um, uh, <laughs> so this is going to be, again, maybe a hard one to answer. Best car you've ever driven, period. That could be everything oh. from the Toyota Corolla to anything. Maybe race car, street car. I'm going to just leave it open. Uh, Run I, with I, it. Four it, wheels and engine. That's all it needs to have. Yeah, I, 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 it's a very difficult question to answer, you know. It's always best for something, you know. Any car is best for something. Sure. Uh, but <laughs> All right, how about this? How about this? All right. If if uh, you know you're right in the middle of COVID, there's nothing to do. You could you could hop in and just go for a drive. What car would it be? No, oh, well then I think the McLaren GT is a good, uh, good, good little thing. You know, I, I actually did a ride uh, with that car because I, I, I was sitting at home in England, all, all uh, in lockup, and uh, I got tired of it, and I called um, Mike Fluid up, and I said, "Listen, the CEO of McLaren," I said, "Listen, I can't sit any longer. I got to go to Spain and test cars," and so he helped me. <laughs> He helped me with a car and some papers, and I I took a McLaren GT and I drove it from uh, my home in London to to well south of Barcelona. That was, uh, uh, you know, wow. I had I had sandwiches in the car. I stopped for fuel only. I didn't sleep. I just drove 16 hours straight, and I uh, came got out of the car down there, and I wasn't even tired. It was. Uh, I thought that was a great testament to that car uh, because that's a GT, you know, and that right. uh, yeah. So. Uh, that's a great little car, actually. I think um, so. Yeah. No, I, that's 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 again perfect perfect answer. Um, okay, my own personal question that I'm going to throw out there, just from a from a, uh, uh, a a driver's point of view, I see you constantly wearing an open face helmet nowadays. Are you just no more full face helmet? Are you just <laughs> over that? I'm over that stage of my career. You know, if I have to wear a full face, don't count me in. Really? You I know, was just thinking, yeah. everything. I mean, literally yeah. everything. I mean, I, I was, that was one of the things that I was, I, I, I almost meant to ask Dean. I was going to be like, did you make him wear the open face helmet in that video? So people knew like, oh man, it's Kenny Brack driving. You know what I mean? Versus like, you know. No, but you know, I, 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 I have, I use, uh, I, I, I um, in Sweden we have snus. It's called snuff. You know, it's like a, a pouch, a tobacco, a pouch of tobacco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and nowadays if I can't use my snuff, I'm not driving. So, and and I can't put it in and out if I have a full face helmet. So you know, <laughs> then I use the open face, and I can I can you know what I remember when I drove with Dean in the spa was it 24 or six hours six hour probably, you know I sit there and I drive and I uh, you know I, I I put in the snooze sometimes and I take it out and you know uh, it might be a red or yellow flag you know you you, you just got to be make. You, you you get older, you get more comfortable, you know. Oh my! I, again, I'm going to go back to my my tagline for you: Kenny Brack, <laughs> a man of great speed and great practicality. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there um, you go. Oh man! For some reason, I, I I'm picturing you right now in an Elva with the snoof in, you know, <laughs> no, no, and just being able to just, just, just launch it out, you know, yeah. no, no canopy, no nothing. Just. You don't spit, you don't spit it out forward because you, you, you know, it's going to blow back straight in your but, face. You got <laughs> well, no, you, you, if it's an Elva, don't you just spit kind of like right in front of you and it just shoots up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Shoot upwards, just yeah. right up into the air and it goes over. Oh, yeah, 
that's good. Oh, um, God. You know, okay, I, I, another question from me that I, I want to ask. Um, you, do you, you know, I know that racing for you is, is again, it's, it's behind you and you're, you're excited about this, this this next, you know, challenge that you're kind of in now, but do you do you still tune in and watch any racing? Is there any racing that you, that you follow or that you still enjoy? Um, or is it just kind of one of those things where it's just... Kind of boring. No, no, no. I, I, I follow. I follow with, uh, with one eye. You know, Formula One. Yeah. I, I've, I've got many friends there. Uh, I follow IndyCar. I got many, many friends there. You know, um, and uh, a couple of Swedes now racing. Uh, Felix Rosenquist. Uh, you know, he's looking pretty good. So that's quite exciting. Uh, you know, I follow a little bit like that, but I'm not really into it. I couldn't tell you any statistics anymore you know it's um I, i've got other things to do now but but yeah i go to it in the 500 every year i try to go you know to see all my friends and um take part in the parades and that you know yeah no, oh, no, oh the the the, 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 awesome. the old the timers the legend parades the old timers you know <laughs> <laughs> you know um, how, how you can see there they're, uh, 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 you know, IndyCar uh, uh, old timers, as we, you know, when they stand up and after dinner, they stand up and walk home, you know, they're all limping and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, 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 yeah, it, it's funny, I, you know, I, I, I imagine, you know, all the IndyCar old timers, you know, looking at the young guys and saying, you know, in my day, we didn't have paddles and we didn't have this and we didn't, you know, and we had to yeah. walk, walk, walk home from school eight you know eight hours yeah. in the snow you know all the all the, the, the stories um, it's the same stuff every generation exactly um all right so i'm gonna ask you another difficult question but it's got to be asked um in your opinion greatest f1 driver of all time paul yeah that is a difficult and, and again, question there's no, you know, don't feel pressured to say anything. I mean, literally, and it could be for your own reasons of why that person was was great, you know, to you. Yeah. Well, you know, it's hard to argue with Michael Schumacher's uh, statistics, you know, actually. Yeah. Uh, but then you go back further and you look at one Manuel Fangio and these guys, yeah. and it's hard right. to argue with that too, you know. Um, I think probably in there somewhere yeah well in, in you know actually speaking of of michael because I, I you know i think everyone was maybe expecting you to say senna and all that which again i i actually don't think there's a wrong answer i think that um you know again there, there's there's the facts and the figures and the numbers which maybe skew more towards michael then there's people that look at outright talent maybe mention senna then you look at like the challenges of what fangio what those guys had to drive back then um but in terms of Michael, because um, I, I feel like, you know, you mentioned a lot about setup, which I feel like, um, not that it doesn't get talked about a lot, but it, it is an art form in itself. You know, do you, do you, you know, give a lot of credit to the fact that he was able to kind of really set up a car, was very good about giving feedback, but also building kind of the team around him? Yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's what he did, you know. I mean, he uh, he brought the the team from Benetton to Ferrari. He he worked with the yeah. people that he knew. They understand each other communication wise, and they 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 just built on that uh, teamwork, you know. And um, yeah, it's a lot of strength in that. And he he made the most out of that, you know. Yeah. No. No. Absolutely. Um, uh, the Boulevard. At McLaren, the famous boulevard at uh, at MTC, all the cars all lined up. You know, if you could take any car from the boulevard and give it a give it a go, is is there a car that you have some nostalgia for or fascinated by that you kind of want to know what it's like to drive it? Uh, first of all, the boulevard is a great boulevard, you know, so, so many <laughs> nice cars right. there. Uh, well, the so it's, it's, it's ask, I'll, be, I'll be more specific. The reason why I ask is, is simply because it, it actually has not just great cars, but I mean, a great mix. I mean, you've got, you know, and obviously the boulevard changes, but I mean, there's, you know, there's Can-Am cars, there's yeah. Indy cars, there's F1 yeah. cars, there's, you know, GT cars. And and you had a hand in, you, you, well, I mean, you, you didn't drive Can-Am, but I guess 
I don't know, would we call IROC something similar to that? I know it's not. It's yeah, not well, Can-Am Can Can was more monstrous cars, you know, but, right, but right. fantastic I mean, cars. It's, it's a lot of... That you that that has that fascinates you from the bowler that you just again you know not 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 you know race it but just maybe just drive it in a bit of anger you know is there a car that you wouldn't mind to you know slip behind the wheel of uh yeah i'll probably slip behind the wheel of uh, one of the uh, uh, you know f1 cars from the from the 80s and 90s you know where yeah. the mclaren uh, marlboro mclaren cars uh, you know that prost yeah. and senna used to drive those are i mean they're not the most technological cars but they are in my mind probably the most beautiful race cars at least you know uh, they were oh, low fat yeah. low fat and wide you know and proper horsepower and you know yeah. proper proper size tires <laughs> you know yeah. it's uh, it, they, they, yeah one of those perhaps but all yeah. of those cars are really fantastic you know so it's really tough to choose one um, but you know and then you have cars from when Bruce McLaren started the company, you know, the, 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 the old cars, you know, it's so much history there that uh, you wouldn't like to take one of those out on the road, but, you know, get get in an accident and destroy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> but it, it's, a, it's a great place. All right. So we are, we are nearing the end here. I've actually gone over by one minute. Um, so I'm going to ask this, this final question, and it's a, it's a two-part question. It's been loaded. So do you, because some drivers won't do this anymore, but you're crazy enough. For you, but, um, will you sit right seat with someone in driver coach? Is that something that you're still up for? No, nah, would never do it. Okay. No, no. Just, just, just was curious. <clears throat> do you still enjoy giving hot laps, having someone sit right seat with you and you scaring the, the shit out of them? Yeah, that uh, is more, uh, that's better. That's a better position okay. to be in. <laughs> so the final question is, if we set you up with a car out here in California, would you come out sometime and, and join us for a track day and maybe scare scare some of our clients? <laughs> yeah, I could do that. It's just to find the time, you know. I love right. California. I love, we go to Laguna Seca or someplace, you know. That's yeah, a yeah, fantastic no, track. Some, we, have, we have some great tracks out here. Um, yeah. Sadly, you can't just hop in a McLaren GT and drive to us. There's a no, big body of water. Um, it's where you might yeah. have to learn to, to now get behind the wheel of a boat. But um, but no. In, in all seriousness, we we you know I know when when the world returns back to normal and your schedule opens up, um, it'd be great to have you come out and, and join us. It'd be a real pleasure and a treat. And um, and just like how this has been, I, I really appreciate you giving us um, you know your Saturday. Uh, because you're still very much working, you know. I mean, we talked about this. I mean, you're still very much doing a lot of stuff. So, uh, I, I really appreciate you giving us the time, and uh, and and you know, I, I hope you come back, and I hope you come and see us in person. I will. I will someday. It would be good, and I hope everyone's enjoyed the the chat, and uh, and that you have a great Saturday. Awesome. You too, Kenny. Thank you so much. Be well, my friend. And uh, take care. And we'll we'll see you soon. We'll do. Take care.